God damn, Pixie Stick, she hit hard as shit. Probably should have like ended that fight when I had a chance. Good fight, Pixie. That motherfucker hits hard. What's up, everybody? King Rich, I'm bringing you my new ESO Sorcerer Burst DPS build. I just put this build together not too long ago. It's based on Dual Wield and Resto Staff. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. I'm a Red Guard, and this build is 100% Magicka DPS. So I put all 62 points into Magicka. So that's going to leave us with 31k max Magicka on the Resto Bar and 32k on the dual wheel bar so we have 19k health um, that's really low health but you have high damage shields to keep you alive so don't worry too much about the health and then you have 13k stamina so what red guard is going to do um, this is mixed with werewolf and red guard and werewolf combined gives you a total of 25 percent stamina recovery in combat so this 647 is going to go up to about 900-ish in combat, basically giving me the ability to block, dodge, roll, CC break. Um, it, it just increases my sustain and my survivability a lot um, compared to other Sorks. Now this build does work with other races like Imperial, High Elf, Breton, Dark Elf, um, Wood Elf. There's a lot of different races you can use to make this build work, um, but my two... My two favorite, I would say, is Imperial and High Elf. So either one of those is really good for this particular build. Um, we have 1,700 base spell damage on a Resto Bar. When you swap over to Dual Wield, that pops up to 2,136, which is extremely high because that's unbuffed. We have buffs on our skills, which we'll go into really soon to show you guys how to get that even higher. Um, you get about 26% spell crit which is good enough you're not really relying on crits but when you do crit it's just devastating and I also have some videos at the end of this build video to show you guys the build in action spell resistance and physical resistance are pretty low but like I said your survivability comes from your damage shields and nothing else um, and you also get a high focus rating also known as spell penetration so most sorks are sitting around where I'm at, spell resistance anywhere from 7k to 13 to 14k. My focus rating is above that, so I go through 9 out of 10 um, Magicka builds uh, or people on light armor. I go through almost 100% of their spell resistance, so all my attacks hit for 100% damage with no mitigation on top of it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look at the gear that I'm wearing for this set. So once again like my other build this is five piece light one medium one heavy and that is for the passives from the undaunted skill line undaunted metal you get six percent max health stamina and magicka when you wear one of each type of armor which is why I have five light one heavy one medium one that's going to boost your max magicka health and stamina it helps a lot and as you can see I have some really high stats here um, so we're running four pieces of the martial knowledge set um, everything is enchanted with magicka you want to go for max magicka that's going to give you survivability with your damage shields and it's also going to increase your overall damage because your damage is based off of spell damage and max magicka that's why all of my sets give me spell damage and max magicka so we're running four piece martial knowledge then we're running four piece of the healer set my accessories are from the healer set so this is going to give you max magicka magicka recovery and spell damage everything is enchanted with magicka on my gear and then my accessories everything has cost reduction you need that cost reduction because um, you don't have like Warlock to get you out of trouble when you get low on Magicka, so you really have to maintain your resources. But the the, the recoveries is is good enough for me. I mean, some people will consider 1100, 1200 low, 
but it's more than enough. I don't really run out of resources, and you guys are seeing the videos to come. Um, and then the other set that I'm running is Magnus. I'm running four pieces of the Magnus set, um, which is my shoulder and helmet. And then I have Magnus on my weapons. So from this four-piece set, you get Maximum Magicka, Magicka Recovery, and Spell Damage. Um, I don't have any enchants on these yet. I'm not sure what I want to do with the enchants on my weapons, which is why I didn't enchant them yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'll update you guys in the future. But right now, I am just running stock. Um, the trait is defending on this because it's going to increase your armor and spell resistance on your resto bar. You don't need spell damage, penetration, or anything because none of your DPS comes from your resto bar. Your resto bar is 100% utility and survivability only. Um, so... <clears throat> we have Magnus Weapons, which is dual will, and these are traded with Precise for Spell Crit. Um, so I'm going to get into why I'm using dual will in a second when we go over the skills. But this is pretty much the sets that I'm wearing right now. Okay, the reason why I'm using dual will is because dual will gives you increased spell damage. Um, I believe the reason why it's working like that is because your base spell damage and weapon damage is based on your weapon. So if you have two weapons on, you get a higher base spell damage and weapon damage, which is why I'm using dual wield. And it also frees up a slot because I don't have to have crushing shock there. This is completely for burst DPS. Um, it's not sustained DPS. It's not pressure DPS. It's just burst. You want to one-shot your opponent, move on to the next guy as fast as possible. So dual will is going to help you do that because it's going to give you some increased spell damage. So as you can see on my dual will bar, my spell damage is 21, 36, as opposed to 17, 24 on my resto bar. So let's go ahead and hop into the skills and see how everything works. Okay, so for the number one ability on my dual will bar, this is Endless Fury. This is an execute. Um, it's also going to proc... Um, crystal fragments so whenever you do apply to execute you have four seconds um, to get them below 20 percent health before the execute actually explodes so a lot of the times you'll put this on proc a frag and then you throw the frag and then they drop below 20 percent health and this finishes them off this hits really hard i don't like using endless fury on any other build but being as though this is a high burst dps build it works out just fine my second ability is Inevitable Detonation. This comes from the Assault Skill line and Alliance War. This is very similar to the Sorcerer ability Curse, but it has a 1.8 second cast time. Um, even though it has a cast time, though, it's AoE and it does more damage than a Sorcerer's Curse, which is Instacast. So this ability doubled with Curse right here usually is going to hit for about 20k. So if people have on damage shields, if people are blocking, this is going to blow through shields, this is going to blow through block, it's going to do a lot of overall damage and then open them up for finishers with Crystal Fragment and Endless Fury. And you guys will see exactly how I make these abilities work when I show you the videos towards the end. So for my number three ability, I am using Crystal Fragments. <clears throat> this is the morph that causes it to be an instacast. Um, this is a really good ability. This is your main CC. This is high burst DPS. Unbuffed, it's at 8.6k. Buffed up, this goes up to about 13k DPS. So you can really one-shot people with this ability right here. Um, and when you double, when you put everything together, it just works out well. So when you proc it, you get a 20% damage increase, which is which brings it up to around 13k. And this usually this is usually what I use to proc it. Um, so when this is on, you get major sorcery which gives you um, spell damage and then on top of the spell damage you get a uh, overall increase to your next ability from this passive and a mages guild which is might of the guild casting the mages guild ability grants you on power increases in the damage of your next attack by 20 percent as long as it's activated within five seconds so you use this you got five seconds on your next attack to do 20% extra damage. So if you use this to proc a frag, that's 20% from Might of the Guild. Then your frag procs, that's another 20%. That's a 40% damage increase. You're going to be hitting people for around 13 to 14k base damage. And I've critted some really insane numbers. I've one shot people, 20k frags, depending on level and armor and penetrations and whatnot. 
put using these abilities correctly, you really blow somebody up. Then we have Curse. Um, this is a really good ability because um, it can be blocked, but it's really easy to apply it. So what I usually do, what I usually do is I put on Inevitable Detonation, then I follow that up immediately with a Curse, and these blow up at the exact same time. So you get about buffed up, you get about 10k damage from this detonation, then you get about 9k damage from Curse. So you get about 20k damage just from these two abilities, and that's enough to one-shot most players. And if, if, if it's not enough to one-shot them, this will finish them because you'll have this on them. And then this is just overkill. It's just, just high burst DPS. It's really good. And then here we have Soul Assault. This is a dot. It's a channel. And it does 33,680 damage over 3.9 seconds which is extremely high um, and it works extremely well if you catch people with burst on them there's like really no healing through it because it hits so hard this can also be increased by 20 percent from might of the guild um, and if you get a 20 percent increase with the spell damage this goes up to about 46 47 k with this build and you hit for um, I believe it's 12k per tick so every this lasts for four seconds. Every second they're taking 12k damage on top of the damage that you applied previously. If you put endless fury on, they can take like 10k from that. They could take 10k from that. They could take 10k from that. It's almost unsurvivable. And I use this on people who like the perma block because even though you're blocking, you cut the damage down by a lot, but it's still too much damage for you to survive. And this is what I do against perma block because because I, I don't have any hard CC. Um, with the sorcerer. So that's pretty much my dual will bar. Let's hop on over to the resto bar. For the resto bar, my number one ability is Daedric Minefield. This is to keep melee DPS out of your face. It's going to do 5k damage per mine. I've seen it hit for about 7k crits. Um, and people tend to get greedy and they try to get you down really fast and they run over multiple mines while they're low. And it's just added burst DPS and it, it just helps a lot. Ball of Lightning. This is uh, an ability that ab absorbs spell projectiles for 4 seconds. Um, actually, for 6.5 seconds, it absorbs spell projectiles. And this is really good against other sorcerers because you don't want to get hit with high burst DPS from another sort running a similar build. This is also good for escaping. <clears throat> and then the number 3 ability is Healing Ward. This ability is your main heal, and it's also a damage shield. When you get low, you're in trouble. You put Hardened Ward on. You put a Healing Ward on. You get like 30k in damage shields. You get back in the fight when you use this correctly. Harness Magicka. This is strictly for other burst DPS Magicka builds, whether it's a Nightblade, Sword, Templar. This is another 10k damage shield, but it only works against Magicka. Um, but it, it, helps, it helps you stay alive against a Magicka build. And then we have Hardened Ward. This is your main damage shield. This is, I believe, buffed up. I don't have my food on right now, so you can't quite see it. Um, but when, when my food is on and I have about 31, 32k Magicka, this is about a 11 to 13k damage shield, I believe, with the 33% more because um, of the morph. But yeah, these shields are your survivability. So this bar right here is for survivability, and this is for keeping people off you, basically, so you can survive longer also. And then the ultimate I'm running right here is Power Overload. This hits really hard. Um, Power Overload is a really good ability, uh, and it gives you access to another bar of abilities. Um, so I usually, I, I, I actually go into it. So my power overload bar is inner light. This is going to increase your crit and max magicka. Ball of lightning. This is going to help you stay alive while you're in this bar because you have to toggle out of this to get to your resto bar again. Then we have crystal fragments. This is to knock somebody down. You knock somebody down, you get two light attacks in for 10k. They'll drop easily. This is to buff you up. You get the mighty to guild buff and you also get more spell damage. So that's going to boost this from 9k to about 12k. And then you got Hardened Ward, just in case you get hit and you want to get a shield on before you toggle out of it. Um, so yeah, that's basically the build. Um, you want to get all your passes. Dark Magic, Storm Calling, Daedric Summoning. 
um, all your racial passives, get the Undaunted Metal passives, get the Mage's Guild passives. Um, and if you're looking for other alts, Dawnbreaker is something that I use um, a lot on my DPS bar. And you can also use Atro, um, which is another really good Greater Storm Atro. This is a really good ability. So, yeah, that's pretty much the build. If you guys have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section below. Um, I just want to thank everybody for supporting me and, you know, watching me stream on Twitch. Shout out to everybody who's uh, been following me from the start and helping me grow. We're at over a thousand subscribers um, on YouTube. We're almost at a thousand followers on Twitch. So we're growing extremely fast and I really appreciate all the help. Um, so I'll, I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of footage of the build in action. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and thumbs up. And I'll be seeing you guys really soon with How to PvP Like a Boss Part 4. So that's it. Peace. Let's go to the right, to the right, to this rock over here. We can use this rock as line of sight. Get mines down. Put mines on top of mines. Yeah, that sword. One down. Oh, I couldn't fucking see something. Come put mines on my mines. Mines on my mines. Mines down. Keep, yeah, keep putting them down. Oh shit, they're on the User left your channel. Mine's down. The night blade right here, I'm going for him. Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker. That guy's almost down. Combo. Don't don't chase him, get back, get back, because we wipe we're wiping him. Last thing we need is some revives. Yep, one's going for it. Got the bash, he's done. Let's get this one more. <sighs> first thing. DK first, I'm on him. Alright, I'll just pressure on the Templar. Snipe. Once you break his uh, guard, I'm gonna knock him, I'm yep. gonna finish him. I have pressure on these He's guys done. over here by me. Hey, I'm bringing a pressure on you guys. Me. Come to me. Yep, we're coming. 
They're reviving. Stop that revive. Got it. Get mines down. Mines on top of mines. Uh, so I brought the on. Stay on that temp. About the Dawnbreaker. He's done. Jukes DK up. next. Which one? Mitris. Mitris switch here. Are you guys coming? Yeah, we're fighting people. Uh, yeah, I had to pick up the Aftermath. The Aftermath, yeah. We got mines down again. Fighting five. No, fighting eight guys. I'm getting my resources back. I'm a little low. Covid you. He's right. gonna run. I got a meteor on me, get away. I need help. Okay. We need to focus this uh, DK. We got a lot of pressure on us right now too. Alright, come come to me, come to, come to my mines. Get mines down. I got, that one got mines down, down too. Targeting. Just keep the mines down, they can't, they cannot handle it. Nice meteor, into the mines. I'm out. Stay there, save it up. 